Good morning and a very special welcome to our morning worship on this the 12th Sunday after Trinity. It's very good to be with you. It was lovely to have our virtual choir introduce our worship once again this morning with that very beautiful hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy. And some of the people from our virtual choir will be taking part in our worship this morning. So we look forward to that as well. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. The theme of our worship this morning is a junction in the road. Last Sunday, we reflected on the question that the Lord Jesus asked of each one of us. Who do you say that I am? After the Apostle Peter made his great declaration of faith in Jesus, Jesus began to talk with his disciples a little more about what lay ahead on the road for him. It was as if Jesus himself had come to a junction in the road, fully knowing how difficult the way ahead. Claudia will very shortly share with us a little bit more about that episode from Matthew's Gospel. But first of all, let's come to God and let's seek his forgiveness for the mistakes and missed opportunities of the week that's passed. The grace of God has dawned upon the world through our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. I'm going to read some verses this morning from Psalm 103 and just use them as a reflection of confession and absolution at the feet of our loving God. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is God's mercy upon those who fear him. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. As far as the east is from the west, so far as he, has he set our sins from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so is the Lord merciful towards those who fear him. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord. O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. And the collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. There are many passages in the New Testament which describe for us what it means to walk the road that Jesus walked. I'm delighted that Guy is going to read for us now part of a passage from Romans chapter 12. Thank you, Guy. The first reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 to 18. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. 
Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honour one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervour, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless, do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low positions. Do not be conceited. Do not repay evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much, Guy. It's good to have several musicians taking part in our service this morning and taking on different roles from the way in which perhaps we usually see them. Our gospel reading today is brought to us by Simon Lindley, known to many of us as a former organist at St Jude's, who's continued to be very much part of our fellowship during lockdown. After Simon has read for us, Claudia will bring us her reflection on a junction in the road. And the prayer which follows Claudia's talk will be given by Dave and Kay Walker's children, Callum, Connor and Gaia. Big thank you to all of you. Thank you. The Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. Glory to you, O Lord. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan, you are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hello everyone. Today I'd like you to imagine that you're driving or a passenger in a car. There's no traffic, the sun is shining and your favourite song comes onto the radio. But you soon realise that you're accidentally going the wrong way. So you have to do a U-turn and go right around and back to the way that you came from. Then, later in the journey, you reach a junction and you have to choose whether to turn left or right. How do you decide which is the right way to go? Sometimes driving is a little bit like life. If we're living our lives the wrong way, we have to make a U-turn and get back onto the right path again. And often in life, we have to make decisions about which way to go. Do we do what's right? Or do we do something wrong? And of course, if we decide to make the wrong choice, we might have to do another U-turn to get back onto the right path again. Jesus seemed to be at one of these junctions in the Gospel reading today. Peter had just recognised him as the Messiah, the Son of the Living God. And Jesus knew that he'd been sent to earth to save us, and he knew it would be expensive not in money, but in life. Jesus knew 
The only way he could set us free was to suffer and die for us. So here was the junction, his decision point. Was he willing to go through all of that for us or not? Our gospel reading tells us that he was willing and he started getting the disciples ready for the terrible things that would happen to him. But Peter didn't like it when Jesus talked about having to suffer and die. Peter didn't want his good friend to suffer at all. It was like Peter was also at a junction. He couldn't understand God's plan for Jesus and he couldn't cope with what Jesus was saying. So he chose the wrong direction. And this made Jesus' decision even harder and even more important. Should he join his friend Peter or should he follow his father God's plan? But we know that Jesus chose the right way. He chose the loving way, the saving way, God's way. And he also helped Peter to make a U-turn so that Peter was also back in the right direction again. Sometimes we have to make difficult choices in our lives. And sometimes we can find that we've been following the wrong path and not doing the things that God wants us to do. So we have to make a U-turn and change the way we live. But the good news is that God loves us and promises to be with us. God's love is there when things are easy and we're traveling in the right path. God's love is there when things are difficult. And God's love is there when we need to make difficult decisions about which way to turn and what to do next. We just need to remember that our Father God loves us always, wherever we are in life's journey, and he will never, ever leave us. So let's take a moment this morning to pray to our Father God. And this week, Callum, Connor and Gaia will read our prayer. Father God, you promise to love us and always be with us. Give us courage and strength to make the right choices even when life is difficult. And help us to follow your plan and share your love with everyone we meet on the way. Amen. Thank you very much all of you. With a special thanks of course to Callum, Connor and Gaia and to Mum and Dad, Kay and Dave. Thank you all. Two years ago, I reached a junction in the road. After almost 20 years in Englefield Green, it seemed time to move on. I thought and prayed about some of the places in the UK that I love best. There were the Isles of Scilly, but invariably they're very difficult to reach across a choppy Atlantic Ocean. There's Norfolk, the county of my birth. Nowhere near anywhere else, as my sister said. And then there was the Wirral. Now that seemed a good option, friends and family up there, and it made good economic sense. I started flat hunting. I felt peaceful and happy about the future. God seemed to be leading me in a different direction, but it was a pleasant and an exciting one. Claudia has just reminded us that Jesus himself knew what it meant to stand at a junction in the road. Jesus knew that the road ahead was the way of suffering and death. But if he were to fulfil God's plan of salvation, that road was the only road. For Peter... This must have been such a knockdown moment. Still, I guess, on the emotional and spiritual high from his confession of the Lordship of Jesus Christ, he was looking to see Jesus take the road to glory. But the suffering and death which Jesus described seemed very far from that road to glory. And the promise of resurrection was far too much to take on board. So Peter attempted to deflect Jesus from the road that Jesus intended to travel. But 
as one of the other Gospels records, Jesus set his face towards Jerusalem. Perhaps the disciples thought back to the first words that Jesus had ever spoken to them. Follow me. If they were to continue following Jesus, there was clearly now another choice to be made. Jesus said, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. As Christians in the Western world today, many of us have very, very limited experience of what it actually does mean to take up our cross and follow Jesus. In other parts of the world, the persecution and suffering of those who walk the road that Jesus walked is greater by far. But Jesus said, those who lose their life for my sake will find it. The best paraphrase that I can offer of that most significant of promises is this one from a hymn I learned as a teenager. Whosoever will live for self will throw his life away. God gives life to those who follow him. God will never ever shortchange us. Whatever we may feel that he asks us to offer up in commitment to him, God will return to us many, many times over. As he stood at that junction in the road, Jesus knew that he had come to die. He knew also that in the giving of his life, the gateway to eternal life would be open to the whole world. There is a sense in which all of us stand today at a juncture. COVID-19 has turned many lives upside down. It has brought in its wake already untold suffering, sometimes to those whom we know and love. As God's people, we have endured absence from one another and the loss of the fellowship which is so precious to us. We still face many changes ahead. Changes to our familiar patterns of worship. Changes to the ways in which we have been so used to doing things as the people of God at St Jude's. None of us, I think, believes that the road ahead will be easy. Sacrifices have already had to be made, and there will probably be more sacrifices to come. But Jesus stands with us at this junction as he stood with his disciples of old. He still calls us to follow him wherever the road may take us. He calls us, as he called his first disciples, to look beyond the circumstances of this present time to the future that God has prepared for those who love him. For the Son of Man, Jesus said, is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. In the economy of God, no sacrifice, however small, that is made for his sake will go unnoticed. No commitment of faith, however hesitatingly it may be offered to him, will go unrewarded. This passage in Matthew's Gospel is a curtain raiser to all that the road ahead had for Jesus. It concludes with a verse that rings very strangely in our ears. Truly I tell you, said Jesus, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. In the eyes of many of his disciples, Jesus' death on the cross was a bitter disappointment and sorrow. 
in the eyes of the world, Jesus' death on the cross was a death of shame. In the eyes and purpose of God, the death and resurrection of Jesus ushered in the kingdom. Many were there to witness that inauguration of the kingdom of God. Many more will witness its fulfillment when Jesus at last comes again. One of the most familiar of all the collects is that read at the beginning of Holy Week each year. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. We do stand at a junction in the road today. Let me remind you of the way in which Claudia concluded her talk this morning. We just need to remember that our Father God loves us always, wherever we are on life's journey, and he will never, ever leave us. I never made it, of course, to the Wirral. God had chosen a different road for me. I'm still very greatly humbled to find myself now not in retirement in northwest England, but with the amazing privilege of continuing to serve him alongside all of you here, travelling with you here in Englefield Green. I close this morning with some of the advice that the Apostle Paul offered the early Christian church for the journey that lay ahead of them. It seems to me to be very apt for us today. Paul wrote these words. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Amen. Now we have a very special treat this morning. Ever since lockdown began, way back in March, we have been blessed not only by Guy's ministry and expertise, but also by the very beautiful ministry in song of Chloe Spencer. And we owe Chloe a real debt of thanks for the way in which she both leads us into worship and concludes our worship Sunday by Sunday. It's a very great blessing to all of us. So I asked Chloe if she would be willing to share with us a little bit about the person behind the music, because I know that she's had so much more to do over these last months than simply recording for us week by week, as she's been so very generously doing. After we've heard from Chloe, I'm delighted that Jill Charrison and her daughter Melanie will lead us in our prayers. Thank you all. Hello, I'd like to thank Judith for asking me to speak to you today. I am Chloe, I'm your friendly pop-up soprano. I'm also a registered osteopath and a singing teacher. I've been teaching for around five years since I started my osteopathy degree, just to supplement my income really. Um, but I've been singing since I was a small child. Um, now a small adult, so not much change really. Um, I took lessons from about the age of 11 and passed my grade eight around the age of 17, just before I left sick form. Um, my first degree was in archaeology and my master's was then in forensic archaeology. And then I spent a year living in Wales presenting the BBC Two production of Tales from the Green Valley, which you may remember, or hopefully not. Um, I spent two years following that doing a saddlery diploma and then two years at working as a saddle fitter, working with horses, before I threw in the towel and finally joined the family business as a commodity trader. I stayed there for seven years before I decided it was time for a change. I met Guy in 2013 when I joined the New Egham Singers and it was with his encouragement that I started teaching singing. I left my job and embarked on the journey that's led me to where I am today. 
I graduated in June this year and I'm now working as an osteopath in Egham at the Still House Clinic with two fabulously supportive osteopaths. I work there a couple of days a week and I still teach singing on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. And on alternative Thursdays, I work as resident osteopath at the Voice Care Centre in Soho in London, which treats mainly performers. Covid had a huge impact on me this year. It interrupted my final year of studies and not to be too melodramatic about it, it crippled my teaching business as many of my older students began shielding. I did move my teaching online um, and I won't lie, I don't really enjoy it, but I work very reactively and I find the latency and distortion you sometimes get with Zoom can really kill the vibrancy of a good lesson, but it's still better than nothing. I think the things that have really stayed with me from lockdown are that I miss the proper end of my degree and I miss seeing my friends who I grew so close to over the last five years. Um, but it, I've had a complete reset to the pace of my life. I was running close to empty when lockdown started. Um, so to be honest, a period of enforced rest wasn't such a bad thing. And I've been amazed at how communities have rallied round, new friendships have formed, people's lifestyles have changed and we've all come to reappraise our priorities. The people I see as patients are all saying the same things, that while the pandemic has introduced a new kind of anxiety and stress, it's also allowed them time with their families, the ability to work from home and to take more exercise. I finally had no excuse to do my three runs per week and I really don't enjoy running. Um, singing for me is part of this lifestyle change. While one of the tragedies of lockdown has been the loss of physical choral singing, my Zoom students have all unanimously said that their singing is one of the things they look forward to the most. There is so much research to show how good for you singing is, from respiratory function, improving respiratory function, to releasing endorphins, just like exercise does. Fitting music into daily life can be a bit of a challenge in a busy lifestyle, but it's a challenge worth accepting for the enormous benefits it can bring. I'm really lucky that I get to sing almost every day, either with my students during an online choir rehearsal or for the church services. Often I don't really feel like singing before I start, but I've never regretted it once I've started, uh, a bit like running really. So that's just a bit about me, about what I do, and thank you so much for letting me speak to you today. Goodbye. Holy God. We thank you for the opportunity to worship you, even when we are separated from one another. We pray for St Jude's and for all the churches in Ingerfield Green, preparing to open their doors once again. We pray for your blessing on our worship and for our safekeeping as we gather together. We pray for all church leaders who are responsible for guiding us through these difficult times. May the blessing of your wisdom and the love rest upon them we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, we pray for our world and most especially for those countries badly affected by the COVID-19. We pray for world leaders that they may govern wisely and well in the face of this ongoing pandemic. We pray for the countries suffering also from continuing conflict and the cruel aftermath of war. We pray for those many refugees still making hazardous journeys in the hope of finding safety in countries other than their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our community and we give you thanks for those who have continued to care for us during lockdown and beyond. We pray especially for all our local schools, our head teachers and all who work alongside them. We pray for children preparing to return to school in the days ahead, some of them after long periods of absence. And we pray for older children who perhaps are still struggling to make sense of GCSE and A-level results. Help them as they try to plan for their future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate God, we thank you for all our local frontline healthcare and emergency workers. We ask, as they care for others, they too may be blessed. We pray for those who are unwell at this time, especially for those known to us. 
We pray for any who have been personally affected by the coronavirus. We pray especially for those recently lost loved ones, that in their sorrow they may know your presence with them. We give thanks for all those who have gone before us in your kingdom, and we pray that we may one day share with them in the blessing of eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, help us as we pray, as we try to take up our cross and follow you. Help us to remember that you have promised to be with us in every circumstance of our lives and help us to walk more closely with you day by day. Most of your Father, accept, accept these, these prayers for the sake of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Thank you to Chloe, to whom I also owe thanks for the wonderful rendition last Sunday of Happy Birthday, in which Disney and Elsa played their part as well, so thank you for that. And thank you also to Jill once again and her daughter Melanie. And we remain indebted to you for your cooking, as well as for your prayers for us all. Thank you very much. Now next Sunday, the 6th of September, we'll see our return to St Jude's for the first time since the end of March. The church has been prepared as best we can in order to comply with all the guidance on social distancing and health and safety against the background of COVID-19. Next Sunday morning, we shall simply have an 8 a.m. service of Holy Communion in church and communion will be brought to people as you sit in your pew. Communion will be in one kind only, wafers, and Andrew Reid and I will be sharing in leading the service. We shall be very careful to ensure that we administer the wafer only to those who want to receive it and feel comfortable doing so. As Diana reminded us last Sunday, seats will be allocated in the order that people arrive and there will be a one-way system in place for entering and leaving the church. Again, we do want to reassure you that our YouTube services are set to continue, at least for the foreseeable future. So following the eight o'clock service in church next Sunday, there will be the usual YouTube service premiering on this channel from 9.30 a.m. And as it's the first Sunday in the month, that service will be a slightly more informal one. Please do join us for either service or for both. And then the following Sunday, the 13th of September, there will be a 9.30 a.m. service in church. Again, it will be a very simple Holy Communion service and it will be live streamed on YouTube. We'll tell you a bit more about that next Sunday. And our grateful thanks as always to Guy for the immeasurable support that we are continuing to receive from him. Please don't forget the Give a Little button to which there is a link on this YouTube page, on our Facebook page and on our website. We're deeply grateful to everyone who continues to give with such loving generosity during these difficult times. So let's pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Peace to you, from God who is our Father. Peace from the Lord Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, who gives us life. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And so we pray for one another, as we always do, in the silence of our own hearts 
hearts that God will bring peace even in these difficult times and that we shall know his presence and trust his love as we continue to walk with him. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low that we may find comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. In Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Now may the God of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. May he meet you at your own junction in the road and guide you in the way that lies ahead. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, rest upon you and upon all those whom you love and for whom you pray, and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. So may we go in peace to love and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ.